let me talk a little bit about hecklers and de-escalation. And there are two different types of hecklers generally. There are a, a group of organized hecklers in New York that we, uh, those of us who do a lot of anti-Trump protesting recognize. Um, the, they make them make Amer they wear Make America Great hats. There's the one guy who films like right in your face. Um, they carry the uh, Ivanka 2020 flag. I mean, I, I like I know them. Um, it, it, so there are those hecklers, and then there are you know, and, and just think about like tourists in Times Square on a weekday, there are gonna be a lot of people who are, you know, most, like, we're really lucky cause that we live in New York because, like, New York is like 90% anti-Trump and the other 10% pretty much aren't that pro-Trump. They're, they're just rich. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but, but there are, like, real Trump supporters who come to New York and go to Times Square and may heckle. You know, and you know, some of the heckling is like, get a job. Uh, they no longer say, go back to Russia. <laughs> Although they, that used to be a big heckle, but they don't say that anymore. But you know, you, they'll, they'll say like, uh, go get a job. She lost, he won, you know, right. He's your president. He's he, right, my country, right or wrong, you know. So, and the problem is, is that someone in our crowd is gonna take the bait. Now, what a heckler wants, and, and what they have the ability to do is to get all the limelight and all the attention. And so what our job is to, is to deny them that. Um, and, to, and to not let them get the whole attention of the whole demonstration turned on, on them. And the press love this because not that, I mean, our demonstrations are kind of boring normally. It's not, they're not really newsworthy, but if there's a confrontation or a good fight and it's kind of pithy, that makes for good news coverage. And so the media will often egg on these kinds of confrontations. So it is our job as marshals um, to de-escalate. De so let's talk about individual hecklers first. You know, so a couple of uh, Midwesterners who are very pro-Trump and whatever. So uh, the way that I have found the best to do it is to tell our people, let me deal with it, don't take the bait. He's baiting you. Focus on, you know, focus on why we're here. And then I talk to the heckler, I introduce myself. I say, hi, I'm Jamie, uh, what's your name? Uh, and this really disarms them because, and then I ask them questions. Where are you from? What do you think about the demo? Did you, you know, are you really pro-Trump? You know, is there anything he's done that you're, you don't really, that you're not comfortable with? And, and I try to have a conversation with them. And what this does is um, it takes them one from shouting to talking. And that means that uh, they're not drawing so much attention. Uh, two, it means that I'm listening to them and that often freaks them out because they're expecting uh, hostility. And if you meet them not with hostility, they're completely thrown off balance. And sometimes all they, you can, uh, what I always do, because I found that it's an argument that works, is I ask them if they believe in the First Amendment. Um, and sometimes they'll ask me, do I believe in the Second Amendment? And I'll say, we don't have to agree on all the amendments, but like, <laughs> do, do you at least like agree with the First Amendment? And I was like, we have common ground. Like, we're, we're, we don't disagree on everything. We both agree that 
people have a right to demonstrate and to gather and free speech and to critique. And that's what we're doing. And I said, and I respect your First Amendment right to talk, you know, to, to be here. Um, and then the whole object is just to talk them down and let them be heard. This is not intuitive. Um, but it really, if you can do it, it really works. So you introduce yourself to the heckler and you ask them questions. And when you're asking them questions, it's not so much that you really care what they say, you're trying to get them to talk and to talk themselves out and to let them be heard. And in a uh, non-hostile way. And um, with individual personal hecklers, that often works. Now, okay, so then we have the, uh, our friends from uh, Make America Great Again. Um, right, and, and usually what we do with them is we say right up front, uh, we agree that you have a right to be here. You know, you, uh, but we don't agree on, on, on the issue. Um, we will respect your First Amendment rights, but we want you to respect our First Amendment rights. Um, and we tell people to ignore them. Um, so what, what people want to do is to chant over them, and that doesn't work. So even if there are 10 of them, and they're chanting... Uh, lock her up. Right, lock her up. You know, then we don't want our group chanting fuck Trump at the top of their lungs. And that, because that doesn't get us anywhere. So we tell people, um, so, so some things that do work are turning your back on them and, and ignoring them because then they're just like 10 guys with MAGA hats chanting locker up and being ignored. And that looks really pathetic. Let me just tell you, it looks really, even they know it looks really pathetic. And to not let them get that, uh, escalation that they're looking for. And so in that case, the hardest thing is with our people to say, don't take the bait. Don't engage with them. Turn around. Let them do their thing. They have a right to be here and do their thing. Uh, they look pathetic. Uh, focus. Don't, don't give them what, they're, what they came here to get, which is a fight. Um, and uh, in Rise and Resist, we've done a lot of demonstrations where we've had, you know, 30 people picketing, doing our thing, and like 10 feet away, they're standing with Ivanka 2020 flag. And our biggest problem is with passerbys who agree with us and disagree with them, and we have to get the passerbys not to take the bait. Um, but, uh, you know, but it's really sort of about uh, getting the people who are there on our side to understand that dynamic of not giving them the attention. Uh, and also not relying on the police to separate them because we, you know, we do believe in their First Amendment right to be there. You know, so it's not that we want the police to chase them away. You know, uh, they have a right to, to do what they're doing. Um, and and that's that's a that's a hard thing sometimes for us to hold. Yeah. Question. So, if I'm engaging with a heckler mm -hmm. and I've stopped and talking to them and the uh, march is going on, at what point do I break away? Like, how do I? So they have, so whenever, whenever, I'm, whenever I'm tired. Of it. Yeah. You know. I mean. I, you know. I would say like after a few minutes, everyone runs out of steam. Oh, okay. But the the important thing is to not do a like. Shut the fuck up, you you know moron. You know, I mean, you know, you sort of have to like check what you're thinking because my initial reaction is 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 not never <laughs> is not what I want to have come out. You know, it's like I you know you have to like channel. It's not for family TV. Right? Yeah, it's like channel the good Jamie. You know, like not the bad Jamie. So in 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 the simplest case. Uh, we would try to get several marshals to stand in front of a, long, you know, a group of people with MAGA hats um, and just tell people, keep moving, don't take the bait. You know, just 
because it's uh, it, it, otherwise it, it, it gives the press an opportunity to make us look ugly, and it, it, it hurts our message if, if we take that bait. A, a couple of other things. Um, there may be people at this demonstration who uh, uh, make us uncomfortable. So there may be black flag anarchists. There may, you know, there, um, there may be people who don't appreciate that they're marshals at all and feel that marshals are oppressive. And uh, we just have to live with that um, because we are there to create, um, uh, to, to keep things uh, safe by de-escalating. Not everybody uh, agrees with de-escalation, but it's the best way to keep us safe. Um, and it feels really fulfilling to do it when things go right and when you know you prevented a good demonstration from going bad. How about if people on your own side start uh, heckling you or heckling each other? You know? so it's a responsibility to each individual, individual take. We, we go to this event, we think we're all in one, the same mind frame, and that is not true. We all are here having a training, but some of us have different tendencies, you know, my tendencies. So I like to be approached by the police officer and to have a conversation. And I know how I will respond politely, with dignity of the officer and my own, and professionalism. You know when you back down, you know how far you can take it. Some people are confrontational. I look confrontational, but I'm not really. I'm the type, if I'm, there's a heckler, I will probably start shouting something else. The Russians are coming, <laughs> or, you know, because I don't want to engage with them in any way possible. I don't do conversations. I rather just move on and keep the peace. And remembering, I'm not a police officer or security. It's not my place. It's not my job. 